Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. A big thank you to all of you for your wonderful support on our videos. We journeyed across to the Isle of Wight to visit a striking Norman castle atop a high hill above the town of Newport. It was here that Charles I was imprisoned in 1647, before his final journey to London and his death. The King's bedchamber has been preserved, as has the window through which he attempted to escape. Join us today as we discover a long and fascinating history here at Carisbrook Castle. Roman and Anglo-Saxon strongholds had occupied the site for centuries and a strong wall was built around the year 1000 was used to stop Viking raids. From then onwards, the castle was expanded, fortified and improved several times. After the Norman conquest, William Fitzosborne, who was the Earl of Hereford, had established a new castle here on the traditional Norman Mott and Bailey plan. With the pair of Bailey enclosures leading to a tall Mott, surmounted by a fortified keep, the castle later passed to the Redvere's family, and it was more than likely Baldwin de Redvere, who was the Earl of Devon, who built the strong curtain wall to enhance the earlier Norman defences. It was not long before the castle began to play a part in national affairs, and in 1136, Redvere's sided with Queen Maud in her bid for the throne. The Earl was defeated by King Stephen and fled here from his mainland base. He thought that the Carisbrook defences would enable him to withstand the King's forces, but the water supply ran out and he was forced to surrender. Carisbrook owes much to one powerful woman. Countess Isabella de Fortebus. The Countess was one of the richest and most powerful 13th century landholders in England, with estates stretching from White to Yorkshire. She inherited the castle and during her reign, extensive upgrades were made at the site. And in 1262, she chose to make her home here at Carisbrook. She transformed the Stark Castle defences to create a comfortable suite of rooms including a great hall with private chambers and a chapel of St Peter. The chapel is now incorporated inside the museum area. In the beginning of 1597, the castle defences were extended yet again with a series of bastions and earthworks designed by an Italian engineer. The Tudor earthworks completely enclose the Norman baileys and are in force with stone and scattered five bastions shaped like arrowheads to counter the threat of artillery fire. But by the Tudor period, the major threat was from a Spanish invasion. The castle is most famous for its association with Charles I. He was imprisoned here at Carisbrook in 1647 after his armies were defeated by Parliament in the Civil War. The King was lodged comfortably in the Constable's Lodging, which was a Tudor building that touches the medieval Great Hall. Set close against the northwest wall of the castle are a suite of rooms that formed part of the accommodation. High on the outer wall is a small barred window and in 1648, Charles I attempted to escape through this window and climbed down a rope to supporters waiting at the base of the castle wall. He had bribed a pair of guards to look the other way during this attempt. The guards took his money, but then notified the castle authorities and the attempt was obstructed. Charles had earlier tried a similar escape from his bedroom but at that time, he must judge the gap between the window bars and became wedged between them. 
He was caught like a rat in a trap until his keepers found him. He could not stop plotting to renew hostilities with Parliament. And then because of his actions, he was taken into much more uncomfortable living quarters and then was eventually taken from Carisbrook to London for execution. This beautiful detailed chapel stands beside the guardhouse. The chapel dates to the 13th century, but it was completely rebuilt in 1899 to commemorate the 250th anniversary of Charles I's death in 1649. It later became a memorial to those who died in World War I, and this includes Princess Beatrice's son Maurice, who died in 1914. One end of the chapel is dominated by a large bust of King Charles and a monument to the dead soldiers. In 1896, Princess Beatrice, the youngest daughter of Queen Victoria, was made the governor of the Isle of Wight. The princess made the castle her summer home after 1914. It was great to be able to visit and wander around the Princess Beatrice Garden, where the English Heritage and Chris Beardshaw have created and transformed the garden into an oasis. Its geometric layout takes inspiration from its former Privy Garden, whilst also paying homage to Princess Beatrice. This time of year, the garden needs to rest before the spring pops up and bursts into life, with daffodils and primroses. But it's lovely to walk around and admire the hard work and upkeep that they have here. They also have a bronze statue that was placed to commemorate the anniversary of the Great War. This shows General Jack Seeley on top of his war horse warrior, who Jack rode during the battle between 1914 and 1918.
In 1377, the castle revolted an invasion by the French. This was largely due to the castle's position, which had significant strategic importance due to the control that they offered over the Solent, and was attacked on multiple occasions. The gatehouse was then upgraded and heightened with gun loops. This was added after this assault to strengthen defences. By the 19th century, Carisbrook Castle was in a poor state of repair. It was not until 1896 that a local historian and architect began to restore the castle under the patronage of Princess Beatrice. One of the earliest parts of the castle, and still one of the most impressive, is this tall stone keep or fortified tower that sits atop a high conical mound. The keep was intended as the final desperate refuge for defenders in case of attack, and is reached only by a steep set of 71 steps. There are very few intact features within the keep that are safe, but you can walk inside a guard robe chamber. But truly, your reward for climbing to the top of the keep is a wonderful view over the castle and to the bowling green to the north. The classic view of Carisbrook Castle is of the imposing, dominant twin-towered bulk of the gatehouse. This began as a simple gateway in the 13th century, but in 1336, Edward III extended it to create a central passage between round turreted towers. Within the gatehouse passage are grooves for three portcullises. The gatehouse gives access to the Western Bailey, which stands on the site of the original Roman fort. The gatehouse almost immediately proved its worth, helping defend the castle from the French invasion of 1377. Nearby is a window embrasure known as Isabella's window, and this was in honour of Countess Isabella. This window once gave light into the Countess's private quarters. It was glazed with coloured glass, a rare luxury, and built into the window with stone seats so that the Countess could enjoy her views across the estates to the sea.
a visit to Carisbrook wouldn't be right without seeing the resident donkeys, who for centuries have been drawing up water for the castle in the well house. They normally give short demonstrations each day on how the well house operated, and then they spend the rest of the day grazing on the five acre field behind the castle. But sadly on our visit, they were being groomed and fed, so we left them to get pampered. The well house inside the inner bailey courtyard was required after the one in the keep ran dry in 1136. It was built by Sir George Carey and it's incredible to see the treadwheel today. Beatrice was also responsible for the creation of the Carisbrook Castle Museum. This fascinating museum occupies the Great Hall and the Governor's Quarters. Within are objects related to the castle's history and the local history of the area. One of the highlights is a recreation of Charles I's bedroom. Other items on show include a painting of Carisbrook by J. M. W. Turner, a medieval jug and Charles I's sword and nightcap. These are just a few of over 27,000 objects, only some of which are on regular display. We had a fantastic chat with a lady who runs the museum, and she told us so many different stories and showed us how the building would have looked back in the day, as well as showing us the oldest working chamber organ in Britain, and also being able to stand in the very room of Charles I's footsteps.
Today, the castle is run brilliantly by the English Heritage and it's open for visitors to explore, learn and wonder. It's a well-preserved stronghold with incredible views up to the Norman Keep and an interesting wall walk, which provides more beautiful panoramic views over the site, where you can just stand back and imagine life back then. There is so much to discover here at Carisbrook and it's a day well spent with or without the family. It's one of those places that should be on everybody's bucket list. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and explore Carisbrook with us. We hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Join us next week for another adventure. Till next time.